Don here in Florida and I'm back again. This time I'm going to talk about this vibration meter I bought or an accelerometer. And the reason I bought this was one, it was very cheap. Two, I wanted to be able to compare it to a much higher end accelerometer or vibration meter that was the uh, Fluke. And three, I really wanted to find out if what I was doing with the dial indicator and downloading it so I could see what it was doing onto my uh, video software would really pan out. And if you caught the very end of that video, I laid out the data of where I was at using the dial indicator versus the vibration meter. And they were actually very close. I was really surprised. The uh, frequency, for example, on the original or the box stock band saw, I was looking at about 33 hertz. I estimated it out about that when I was using the uh, dial indicator. And it came out to 33.64 hertz with the vibration meter. So that was really close. <clears throat> They were a little bit further off on the amplitude, but still close enough that we were in the right ballpark. So I'm actually kind of uh, surprised and happy that the whole dial indicator thing did uh, pan out like it did. It, it is a viable uh, reference point, at least, to uh, determine where you're at and see if you're doing better. But uh, the vibration meter is what I want to talk about today. <clears throat> this was the cheapest vibration meter I could find on Amazon, coming in at $122. Uh, let's take a look at it and then we'll tell you what I think. Okay, this is how it came. It was boxed up. Nothing fancy about it. The box is nice material. Am Tast Digital Vibration Removing Machinery. Made in China. Okay. okay, and the box is nice, but this is going in the garbage and I'll show you why. The instrument itself is packed in this typical plastic casing that they send this stuff in and it's nice i mean it's not bad for for what you get here considering the size of the tool is very small taking it out it's got this uh plastic insert here and i can't de decide whether i'm going to keep this box and reutilize it for something else or uh or just get rid of it because it's a lot of box just for this one little test meter anyway so getting this out of the box it's uh not very heavy but it does feel fairly well built uh, uh the batteries i've already got in it because i've used this already this is not an unboxing video and it comes with different tips here it's got a, a basic tip like this interestingly enough though this tip you can take off and, and you can put the sensor flat down on a surface like this and use it like that or you can use these screw in tips and i've tried it both ways and i do prefer it with one of these screw in tips and then it's got the extended tip here as well that allows you to get down into hard to reach places which is pretty neat and then of course the booklet so looking at the booklet instruction manual vibration meter <clears throat> this product is based on the piezoelectric effect of artificially polarized ceramics it is suitable for conventional vibration measurement of mechanical equipment especially for rotating and reciprocating machinery can measure vibration, displacement, velocity, and acceleration, and is widely used in fields like machinery manufacturing, electric metallurgy, and general aerospace. And this is where I come in. Um, I said I was in the Air Force for a number of years, 22 to be exact, and I did work aircraft maintenance for a while. And amongst other things besides aircraft maintenance, we used it in different things. So. Um, I'm pretty familiar with the vibration meters, although the meters I'm more familiar with are, are the higher end. Obviously, uh, Uncle Sugar pays for the good stuff. So when I bought this, I simply wanted to double check what I was doing with the dial indicator. And I thought, well, you know what? Let's just try it out. Let's see how it works. After I made the initial purchase on Amazon, I had a brain fart. I was like, oh my lord. I wanted a vibration meter that had a graphing function to it and it did not mention graphing when I bought this. So I was a little upset after I'd ordered it and I was getting ready to cancel. But as you know, Amazon, they deliver almost immediately. So when I got it, I was a little surprised to find out that it does have a graphing function. 
So we're gonna go through this here. These are just the instructions on how to set it up and use it. This is when I got opened up the book, this is where I found out that it does have a graphing function. Now the graph is very small, but it is handy. It, it's handy enough that, uh, that I'm actually impressed with what it can do. So it'll store files for you. I wouldn't do that. I'm, I'm sure it takes up space in there and you know, I just don't need to store files. I tend to write everything down anyway, once I know what it is. And in the back here, it actually has an ISO standard chart for the size of machine you have and the levels of uh, amplitude that you're getting from each machine and whether it's a good or bad setup. So that's pretty cool. Setting up is actually pretty easy. I, uh, well, let's just turn it on and do it. So when you turn it on, okay, it comes on. This is what I call the, the quick test screen. And, and it, to me, it's kind of funny that it comes on directly to quick test, but I guess that's maybe because I'm used to more complicated uh, machines. So we'll go to menu. And if you go down to settings, okay, you look on here, it says uh, select language. We don't need that. Let's go down. Select language, screen light, uh, flashlight, shutdown time. And this here I did. I, I put five minutes. If I'm not using it in five minutes, then I do want it to shut off on its own. I don't want to kill the batteries. Um, machine size. This is good. And all the machines that I have are, are uh, small size machines. So you can use class one, which is small size, class two or class three. And if you scroll down it'll even say tell you what size a small machine is up to five kilowatts or let me read that let me get it in closer 15 small size is up to uh, 15 kilowatts and medium is up to uh, 75 kilowatts and then large machines uh, above 75 so it, it is nice to be able to set up the size machine and as you saw in here on this chart Th this allows for not having to second guess what you're looking at when you're looking at the uh, quick view. Okay, so um, rolling down, that's it. We can go back to menu. So I set it up for five minutes shut off and uh, small machine. That's basically all I need. Now, if we move here to say uh, velocity, okay, distance is really amplitude for us. So we'll select that. This allows us to show the travel of amplitude, the movement of amplitude in the machine. And it, it gives us a max, a min, and an average. So it's, it's actually averaging it out for us. But having this graph on here, I know it's very small, but you can see over a, a short time frame whether you're having uh, issues. Say you have uh, uh, something that's clunking, say like a gear that's not meshing properly, or it's, it's uh, torqued up and it's bashing inside when two gears come together you'll see that jump on there and if you see it at a regular interval then you pretty much guess what it is um, bearings the same way if you if you have a rubbings of say bearings coming around when it gets to where say the shaft is pushing down on the bearing you're having a radial load on that bearing it'll show up on here so that is really handy. This, this is why I like to look at the graphs and not so much just the general information. It's nice to have that general information. Okay, coming around to this side, I think I was getting a lot of glare from the sunlight. So let's bring this in a little bit better so we can see it. Uh, you can see your max, min, and your average amplitude. It calculates that out for you. But over here, also notice that, that you're, it's showing your acceleration time and deceleration time going up on as well. So it's showing a couple different things here, but uh, this is basically what we're concerned with on this screen. So if we go back to menu, and then we cycle around to acceleration. Okay, <clears throat> again, acceleration. If you think of acceleration as the low frequency, uh, and you take this reading here, say for example on the Original bandsaw we did the delta we had 5.8 milliseconds, but that was squared. If we take that 5.8 and we squared it, we came out with the uh, 33.64 for our frequency. So that's really handy. Again, it shows you max, minimum, and average. Okay, 
and right here notice it says low frequency okay we usually consider low frequency up to about 100 hertz or so so i'll have to look in the book and find out exactly what that is um actually i think it tells us on the quick screen here so if we go back here um notice we have our low frequency here and we can switch between low and high here uh 10 to 100 kilohertz whoop that's a screen turn okay low reading is 10 hertz to 1 kilohertz or 1000 hertz and high is 1000 hertz to uh, 4000 hertz so uh, this allows us to see it notice when we're using the quick tester here we can see the low frequency and high frequency readings this is this is how we kind of judge what we're looking at the low frequency is going to be here and anything going odd in the high frequency is going to be here and your amplitude is going to be right here but notice down here there's an arrow across this part this allows us to test if we're within an iso standard so when we hook this up we can see the numbers but this arrow is going to indicate whether we're in the good range all the way to the bad range on say bearings or gears or whatever we're looking at in the movement of our motor or or gearbox or or even turbocharger for that matter notice it it changes screen so you can go look at it at different uh directions and i i've been using it mainly like this because i was going down on those plates but say you have to go in sideways for, for a bearing or something you can go in like this you can go straight up like that you can go in like that okay if you have an axial load say at the end of a shaft or something you can come right up against it like that so it's very handy okay so coming over here to the lathe if we want to know the condition of our lathe or keep an eye on it we can take a tool like this and we can measure our bearings or any other mechanical point on this that we think vibration could be an issue um, maybe like every six months or every year and keep a log of that now i've already warmed the machine up so we're good to go here and you always want to warm your machine up before you do this and i've got it set on our graph for <clears throat> amplitude so if we come on to the bearing like this we can measure in any amplitude movement into that bearing like this and it's hard to see on the graph because the graph is very small and on the camera you may not pick that up but you can see it's running almost nothing 0 0.002 millimeter of amplitude again we can measure this bearing and this is actually running about the same or less on on the average it's 0 0.001 okay axially axially we can come down here do the same thing and again the average 0 0.001 so the bearings on this machine we know are good now we can also do a quick test on this we can change go to the go to the quick test like this and this will kind of tell us everything at once without the graph just the numbers okay and this is our frequency right here very very minimal it's almost nothing again frequency here and we're not really picking anything up on the amplitude same thing here we can change the screen by the way come onto it like this and actually we have a we're picking up a little bit more frequency response in the end this way okay maybe time for another bearing adjustment so it's very handy to uh keep track of your machine it's conditioned through a time period it isn't just i mean you can come in here and you can tell yes right now that you have a bad bearing for example or it would diagnose you down to a bad bearing and that's what this is, a diagnostic tool. But we can also go and directly find an issue. Now, when I bought this mill, I was getting a lot of uh, noise that I thought was, or I knew was a bad bearing, but I didn't know where the bearing was. Now, I was hoping it was in the motor, but as anybody that knows the MVNs will attest to, chances are it's probably in the spindle. Um, I had to go through all the, you know, oh, is it the spindle? Is it the, the motor? 
disconnecting the belt from the motor, running the motor. Of course, the, the, sat, the noise I was getting out of it would dissipate after that point. With a tool like this, I could have simply come on to the motor and check the bearing conditions through the case without actually having to go through all the, you know, take the belt off and play guessing games uh, to determine whether it was this or the spindle itself. So this would have speeded it up. Again, I could have checked the spindle bearing right off of here like this, and I'd have known. It would have really just sped things up for me as far First, as last that. week you saw me looking at the vibration of the tables here on this saw and on the Frankensaw, of course. But you, you can use this on a myriad of, of uh, machines. You, it doesn't have to be on electric machine shop machines. You can use these on turbochargers, basically any rotating assembly. Um, one really cool trick to these is let's say you're picking up a lot of vibration in a machine, you're not sure where it's coming from. You've gotten down to you think it could be in the motor. Well, you, you can diagnose, yes, there's a, an issue with the motor, but you could actually come to each foot pad, check each foot pad individually, and, and come down and find a loose bolt at a foot pad. And this has been done many a time. <clears throat> so basically, anywhere that you have to fetter out problems in a piece of machinery, and you're not sure exactly where it's coming from, this is a really, really great diagnostic tool for doing just that. <clears throat> and I'm not just saying about this tool. I, I, this is any vibration meter or accelerometer. Of course, uh, I was brought up on the good tools, being in service for so long. But I'm really impressed with this. Uh, at $122, I mean, versus four or $5,000 for a, a fluke, uh, you know, it's just amazing what this will do. So was it worth it? Well, <laughs> I'm not sending it back. <laughs> if that'll answer your question. Um, yeah, for me it was worth it. So I think probably to anybody that works on or fixes their own equipment, it, it would probably be worth it as well. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, as always from Florida, Don out.